Metamorphic grade refers to the range of metamorphic, ch metamorphic change that a rock will undergo that progresses from low grade to high grade metamorphism. Low grade essentially means that the rock will metamorphose at temperatures and pressures that are just above the normal conditions that a sedimentary rock will form in. High grade means that the metamorphism occurs at much higher temperatures and pressures. Now the sequence of metamorphic grade can be defined by four different types of metamorphic rocks and those range from low to high grade. Those four metamorphic rocks are slate, phyllite, schist, and gneiss. Now what's great about these metamorphic rocks is that if you find one of these in a formation, you can infer the temperatures and pressures, essentially the conditions in which that metamorphic rock had formed in the first place. Within each one of these types of metamorphic rocks can also be found what we call index minerals. Now index minerals are minerals that form at certain temperatures and pressures, which can also be used to identify metamorphic grade. Now, index minerals are great because they also provide important clues to a rock's sedimentary protolith as well. Now remember the protolith is the parent rock in which each one of these metamorphic rocks had formed in the first place. So let's take a look at some of these rock examples for each one of the grades. So the first one we have is slate. Now slate is considered a low grade metamorphic rock which means that it forms at relatively low temperatures and low pressures. Almost just above normal sedimentary rock conditions. Slate is a type of metamorphic rock that usually forms from a protolith of mudstone or shale. Now slate looks very close to what a normal shale or mudstone would look like. Now the difference between mudstone and shale is that mudstone is essentially just a more massive sedimentary rock, while shale is also uh, contains a fine grade sedimentary particles, but has these different layers. Now, when shale or mudstone undergo metamorphism, these layers will form that indicate the protolith of the rock, but they also indicate certain conditions under which this metamorphic rock had formed. And we call this layering, especially in low-grade metamorphic rocks, foliation. Now, I remember from the PowerPoint that foliation is the alignment of platy minerals within a rock. So slate has a distinct type of foliation, and we call that slaty cleavage. You can see it right here. Now slate, because it is a low grade metamorphic rock, you can't really make out any of the minerals, so it has much smaller crystals because it forms at lower temperatures and lower pressures. The next type of metamorphic rock in our grade scale moving from low to high is phyllite. So phyllite forms under still lower temperatures and lower pressures, but higher than those of slate. So phyllite can also form from a shale and mudstone as its parent rock or protolith. But once we get into phyllite, we begin to see some of these index minerals that form, specifically muscovite, and sometimes you can get garnets, but it's very, very rare. Phyllite also has cleavage, which you may be able to make it out on the camera here, but we call this crenulation cleavage. And you can more easily see it on the top of this piece of phyllite, where it looks as it just has these little waves these undulations. So we call this crenulation cleavage. Now this is just showing this alignment of these platier minerals, aka muscovite, in this sample. If we move on up in our grading scale, the next one we have is schist, which is a rock that forms under medium to low um, grade metamorphism. So not as high temperature and high pressure as nice, but higher than slate, 
and higher than phyllite. So in your box, you have two different examples of a schist. You have a mica schist and you also have a chlorate schist. Now, both of them form under similar sort of temperatures and pressures, but the mica schist forms under slightly higher temperatures and higher pressures than a chlorite schist. Now, chlorite is a type of index mineral that forms under lower temperatures and lower pressures than, under, than other index minerals such as muscovite, biotite, garnet, and starlites. So in this sample, as you can see all the shiny bits are really good examples of muscovite crystals. The black crystals are biotites. And this rock, which is easier to maybe see in this sample than the others, is it has a type of foliation that's called schistosity, which you can kind of make it out. Some of your samples may be better than others, but all of this layering that almost looks like it's curving a little bit, looks kind of like rolling waves, is a good example of the schistosity, which is schist's cleavage. So now that brings us to the last type of rock within our grading scale, and that is gneiss. Now, gneiss essentially forms at one of the highest temperature and pressure conditions out of the metamorphic rocks. So here we have a pretty good example of a gneiss. This isn't the most highest grade gneiss that I've ever seen, but it's pretty close. Now, gneiss has similar minerals that are found in schist, and schist has similar minerals that are found in phyllite, and phyllite has similar, similar minerals that are found in slate. Essentially how you can see this as all four of these rocks could have had a similar protolith, especially if we don't have any other index minerals like starlites or garnets or kyanites. But all these for the most part contain similar um, Min uh, compositions that you can find in something like a muscovite and a biotite. Now this nice, this nice right here has a, has um, a type of foliation that we call nisic banding. And so you can see right here as you see this alteration of the dark bands with the light bands. So the alternating bands show that the platier minerals are in these darker bands, which are your biotites and muscovites, with the other stuff in between just kind of taking up the spaces. But the alternating colors are a very good indication of foliation. All of these rocks right here could have formed from the same protolith. So a good example of Nice's protolith, and its sedimentary protolith could be a mudstone or a shale, or a nice could have been formed from an igneous protolith like a granite. 